Astronomers have recorded a groundbreaking discovery. With the help of the Hubble Space Telescope, they photographed by far the oldest star in the universe. In the process, the stellar dawn broke when the cosmos was just 900 million years old. Do you want to know what the background of this sensational discovery is all about? And which exciting observation is keeping experts spellbound? Then sit back, press the like and subscribe button, and stay tuned until the end. The Morning Star of the Universe We have a new record holder. When our solar system was nothing more than proverbial astronomical curds in a shop window, the first stars began to shine a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, driving out the Dark Ages. But when and where these stellar progenitors emerged in detail is still one of the most central questions of contemporary space research. Accordingly, experts face an enormous complication in this regard. The resolution of their telescopes is not sufficient to make individual celestial bodies visible in this cosmic primordial flood. Until now, scientists have only been able to indirectly observe the stars in question with the help of light spectra of luminous gas clouds and early galaxies. An unpleasant circumstance that has finally been a thing of the past for a few months now. And this, thanks to an astronomical stroke of luck. In detail, a galaxy in the foreground has shifted in such a way that its gravity acted like a natural magnifying glass. As a result of this welcome gravitational lensing effect, researchers led by Brian Welch of Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore were able to directly study a single star from the early days of the universe for the first time. As is so often the case, we are dealing with the result of an exciting optical time travel. The Hubble telescope let its technical gaze wander 12.9 billion years into the past. Sensational Stroke of Luck If you follow the experts, it's usually almost impossible to identify individual celestial bodies at such enormous distances. Because at such distances, even full-grown galaxies often only look like blurry specks of light. As mentioned earlier, however, the light from the galaxy hosting the record star should be gravitationally distorted. As a result, a large arc-shaped structure was formed, which scientists christened the Sunrise Arc. Within the cosmic arc, in turn, slumbered an object that stood out abundantly from the scenery. A telltale point of light which embodied a very early star, or double star. As luck would have it, the structure was located at a point that was particularly strongly magnified by the gravitational lens. In detail, the emitted light was amplified up to 40,000 times here. For the researchers, this unexpected discovery was like an astronomical drumbeat. They had never dreamed of directly observing such a distant star. After the initial euphoria had subsided somewhat, it was time for the experts to decipher the background of the new stellar record holder. Erendel Following its discovery, the newly discovered celestial body was to be christened with the appropriate name Erendel. This old English word means nothing else than morning star. Furthermore, the follow-up investigations revealed that Erendel exceeded the mass of our sun by a factor of 50 to 100. Consequently, it was also a million times more luminous than our host star. Erendel also effortlessly eclipsed the sun in terms of temperature. While the surface temperature of our central star is 5,772 Kelvin, Erendel's is put at 8,000 to 60,000 Kelvin. However, the main focus of the scientists was on the material composition of the star. Since it already formed in the early days of the cosmos, it did not have the same raw materials at its disposal as its modern counterparts. Thus, the majority of the chemical elements developed only by the nuclear fusion of those early stars and their explosive supernovae. Against this background, the assumption is obvious that the early celestial bodies consisted of those elements which were already formed in the Big Bang, hydrogen and helium. Provided that the list of the components of Eurendel is complete with these two components, it would join the exciting ranks of Population 3 stars. This includes those glaringly bright celestial bodies that first saw the light of the cosmic world. In view of the fact that the early massive stars generally had only very short lifetimes, 
and at the time of Erendel's formation had probably already exploded. This classification is not very likely among researchers. Nevertheless, the object is a unique stellar gateway to the past, opening the door to an era that has hardly been explored so far. At the same time, that era is the basis for everything we know today. If we would like to imagine the history of the universe once as in a book, we still lack the first chapters. Experts' hopes now rest on the use of the James Webb Space Telescope. With its high-resolution infrared optics, the $10 billion instrument is ideally suited for identifying and comprehensively studying the light of such early stars. In this context, the scientists also want to find out in detail what type of star we are dealing with here and what higher insights can be derived from it. For one thing is certain, the deciphering of the morning star has only just begun. The Riddle of the Reionization What is valid to the relatively small structures of the universe naturally also transferred to the bigger ones. With the emergence of the first stars, also the first galaxies of the cosmos grew, which finally heralded the cosmic dawn. During this phase, the radiated ultraviolet light of the pioneer stars caused an ionization of the primordial neutral hydrogen. Briefly, the term ionization describes any process in which one or more electrons are removed from an atom or molecule, ultimately leaving a positively charged ion. In detail, the phase of the so-called reionization made the further development of the cosmos possible at all. However, we do not yet know when this decisive era began in detail and which galaxies were its main driving force. Experts have already succeeded in identifying a number of early galaxies that existed several hundred million years after the formation of the universe. But these are sometimes very massive collections of stars that were far too rare at the time to drive the reionization. Since ultra-low luminosity galaxies were significantly more common in comparison, it's reasonable to conclude that they also acted as a driving force of the process. However, this assumption comes with a huge catch. The corresponding galaxies are so faint that they can hardly be detected. In addition, the structures are often enclosed by neutral gas clusters, which swallow the best detectable light. Another record discovery. But just as in the case of Erendel, the experts were helped by chance. This time, the practical gravitational lens was able 2744, a massive galaxy cluster that had moved in front of an early type galaxy. Because the sparse light was consequently amplified 13-fold, astronomers were able to catch an unprecedented glimpse and thus track down the faintest galaxy yet seen in the early cosmos. Named JD1 and added to the star maps with the help of the James Webb Telescope, researchers assume that we are dealing with a representative of the structures that fueled the reionization of the cosmos. Furthermore, the images from the near-infrared camera, NearCam, revealed that JD1 is a comparatively small galaxy, consisting of a clump of stars and two somewhat smaller centers. Even the first images indicated an extreme redshift and, accordingly, an enormous age. A spectroscopic analysis by NearSpec later proved that the experts had been on the right track with their initial estimation. The redshift is calculated to be Z equal to 9.79. In other words, the gravitational age of the star is very high. Said differently, the gravitationally bound cluster of stars already existed when the universe was only 480 million years old. No other known galaxy undercuts JD1 in terms of light faintness. However, this was far from the only insight that came with this exciting find. Furthermore, analysis of the spectral data revealed that JD1 was only 30 million years old at the time of its discovery, and thus still in its galactic infancy. Compared to its present-day counterparts, the mass of stars was also significantly lower. Just as the researchers had expected, the stellar components of JD1 also had very few heavy elements. Significantly more metal poor than our Sun, this fact confirms that this galaxy was subject to a young, star forming system whose chemical enrichment was just getting underway. Or, to put it differently, 
JD1 belongs precisely to those types of galaxies, suspected of having driven reionization. But this unique observation also proves to us once again how insightful the use of the James Webb Telescope already is. Without the technical help of the most powerful space telescope of all time, it would probably have been impossible to identify JD1 in the gigantic expanses of space, according to scientists. And with that, thank you for watching our video all the way to the end. Feel free to leave us a thumbs up and subscribe if you like the video or just want to support us for free. Do you want to see more exciting videos about the most important space discoveries of all time? Then take a look at the other contributions of our channel, which we have linked for you in the credits. But first, we're curious to hear your thoughts. What goes through your mind in light of Eurendel's and JD1's discoveries? Do you think that one day we'll succeed in deciphering the earliest developments and spectacles of the cosmos? We look forward to your comments.